Number 27. Find the terminal velocity of a spherical bacterium whose diameter is 2 micrometers falling in water. You will first need to note that the drag force is equal to the weight at terminal velocity. Take the density of the bacterium to be 1.1 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per meter cubed. All right. So first thing is, uh, let's detail a free body diagram for this bacterium. And this point here will represent the bacterium. Now there's a certain weight, it's falling in water, right? So there's a certain weight to the bacterium that's pulling it towards Earth. I'm gonna label that W. And W is equal to mg, right? So in order to figure out the weight, I need to know the mass of the bacterium. Did they tell us the mass? No, they did not, right? So we're gonna to have to figure out a way to determine the mass. They did give us the density, right? So recall that the formula with density is density is equal to mass over volume. And if they gave me density and there's a way I can calculate volume, then I can find the mass. All right, so the, the, the real question here is, how do I find the volume? Well, they told us, first thing they told us, it is a sphere, right? So let me draw a sphere. And that's well, a little lopsided. Let me try to, yeah, it's a little better. So this sphere, it says, has a diameter of two micrometers, right? So two micrometers. And then if that's the diameter, what's the radius? Well, it's just half, right? So whatever this distance is over here, that's gonna be one micrometer. But now, you know, in terms of my calculations, I like to have things in meters. So what I need to do is take the one micrometer and convert that into meters. So I put micrometer on the bottom, meter on the top, and then this is just knowing the uh, conversion factors for the SI units here. This is gonna be 10 to the six over one. Then when you cancel out those units, it becomes 10 to the minus six meters, okay? Now, how does that relate? How does the radius relate to the volume of a sphere? Well, you have to remember the formula for volume for a sphere. It's four thirds pi r cubed. So I just found the radius, that's great in meters. So it's four thirds times pi times 10 to the minus six, and that'll be all be cubed. So now let's simply plug that into the calculator. So let's do four divided by three, Oop, 4 divided by 3 times pi times uh, 10 raised to the negative 6. And that is all going to be cubed. Not all, just the 10 to the minus 6. So that we get a value of 4.19 times 10 to the minus 18. Right? That's in terms of meters cubed. So that's the volume. So I found the volume. I know the density. Let's calculate the mass. So we'll use the formula up above. So 1.10 times 10 to the third will equal the mass divided by the uh, volume, which was 4.19 times 10 to the minus 18. So just do just cross multiply here. So the mass is, we're gonna get a value of 1.1 times 10 to the third times 4.19 times 10 to the negative 18. And what do we get? 4.61, right? We get a value of 4.61 times 10 to the negative 15, and that is in kilograms. So that is the mass. Now that allows me now to calculate the weight down here. So let's do that. So the weight now is equal to 4.61 times 10 to the minus 15, all multiplied by gravity. So the weight is going to be equal to 4.61 times 10 to the minus 15 times 9.8, and we get a value of 3.5, uh, not 3, 4.52 times 10 to the minus uh, 14. Okay, now that's the weight, and remember now, the significance of finding that is now we will know the drag force. Well, why? Well, remember, we're trying to find the uh, terminal velocity. Okay, terminal velocity implies final velocity, meaning maximum velocity, right? If something has a reached its maximum velocity and it's still traveling, is it changing in its velocity at all? Assuming it's still traveling down? No, right, it's still traveling at that same terminal velocity. Therefore, if the velocity isn't changing, what could we say about the acceleration? It's equal to zero. If accelerations are equal to zero, what can we say about the forces? They should be balanced, right? Or the sum of the forces should also equal zero. So if the sum is equal to zero, then they must balance each other out. So I know that the force of drag here that is going to resist the weight force has to be exactly equal to this weight force, but just in the opposite direction. That's why it's pointing up. So here it's going to be 4.52 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, what does that allow me to do, right? This is essentially, right, the drag force, shear force, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this will now allow me to calculate terminal velocity. 
Okay, so the next important step in this question is, what formula are we going to use? Now you got two formulas over here. Okay, you got the drag force formula and you essentially have Stokes' force or the Stokes formula, all right? So I know I did put F sub D here. I mean, really, though, I'm going to be using Stokes' formula. Why? Uh, the reason why is because this, this uh, drag force formula only holds for really objects falling in air that have a density close to that of air. And there's a couple of other assumptions, right, that the speed isn't too low and all that other stuff, you know, and the object's not too small. Then you might say, well, what, what constitutes small? What's the demarcation between small and big? I have no idea. All right. So just know that when you're dealing with like bacterium sized objects or you have an object falling in something other than war, uh, other than air, excuse me, like water in this problem, probably going to be using Stokes's law. All right. So let's detail this equation. So I have the force that's opposing the motion is equal to six times pi multiplied by the viscosity of the fluid that the object is traveling in multiplied by the radius of the of the object times its velocity. Now, when the uh, force that opposes the motion is equal to the weight, that's when I know I'm calculating the terminal velocity. So this value here is going to be 4.52 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, that equals 6 times pi times now the viscosity. Well, the viscosity of what? The viscosity of water. Well, what type of viscosity? Dynamic or kinetic? Well, dynamic. Okay, well, what temperature? Well, guess what? I don't know. It didn't tell us, right? It didn't mention a temperature. So I am to assume a value, all right? You know what happens when you assume, uh, but I can make a safe assumption. Just if there's no temperature given, just use this value. I think this should be pretty good. Just use one times 10 to the minus three and the units, um, what are they? Kilogram per meter per second or something like that? Kilogram per meter per second, something like that. All right, so the, these, will be the, uh, these will be the units, all right, for the, for the uh, viscosity, all right? Okay, so now let's plug in that number. So 1 times 10 to the third, uh, excuse me, minus 3. That's the viscosity times the radius of the object. Well, we found the radius before, right? We found the radius to be uh, 10 to the minus 6 meters. All right, so plug that value in, 10 to the minus 6. And this will now tell us the terminal velocity. So let's clean things up a little bit. Okay, so 6, uh, six times pi times 1 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, times 10 raised to the negative 6. So we get a value here of 1.88 times 10 to the minus 8 times Vt. And now we just want to solve for Vt, so divide out the 1.88 from both sides, 1.88 minus 8. And we get the terminal velocity being 4.52 times 10 to the minus 14 uh, divided by 1.88 times 10 to the negative 8. And we get 2.4 or so, right? 2.40, 2.40 times 10 to the minus uh, 6, and that's meters per second. All right, so notice here um, how Stokes's law does not is not um, a function of the square of the velocity. It's essentially linearly uh, related, and it's also related to the radius of the surface area of the object. All right. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please do remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. See you then.